All right. Um, evening, everyone. Um, I know Kelly can't make it, so it looks like we're taking account here. I'm here. Carol. Yes. Jay is not. Holly is here. I'm here. Look, that wasn't worked either. Oh. Uh, let's see. Pats at the controls. There okay, she is. Let me give you a call in number. I think you can call in. I... Oh, Chris, can you mute yourself? Yeah, I'm trying to get Judith on the call. Just oh. to be honest with you, it, it, she, something's wrong with her computer. So I'll mute and I'll try to get her on the phone through the phone oh, line. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Um, yeah. Let's see. Oh. Anybody else on this call that I'm not? I'm here. Okay, she didn't get me. I got gotcha. you. Trying to get rid of the glare. All I could see is my glare. <laughs> <laughs> and sorry I missed last Sunday. I was busy making sauerkraut. <laughs> we had five, it was five of us couples and a pickup truck full of cabbage. <laughs> well, I guess that's an excuse. <laughs> Best one I've ever heard. A lot of... <laughs> A lot of shredding and stomping with best uh, uh, not feet. Is not Chris feet. calling the woman about the um, mural? Yes. It's not yeah. on the agenda, Pete. I know. I just oh. gotta be, bring it up for we'll put it in wherever. The, um okay, so we've got roll call here, we've got a quorum. I think I've got everybody else beginning at six thirty-three and um the first thing to do is call for a motion to adopt or modify the agenda. So we had a request to consider um, some further um, information about the mural that we had uh, supported uh, a few uh, meetings ago. And so I'll add that under new business. Um, does anyone else have any items that they wanna add on the new business that aren't on the agenda? Um, I think I just want to say thank you to um, everyone that worked on the cake uh, to have that packed up successfully and sent to Lover is wonderful. I just think that that should be part of the minutes somewhere. Well, uh, when we get to the cake, how about then? Okay. <laughs> now I've just lost everybody. I got to click. Oh, there we go. Okay. We're here. Um, yeah, I was going to, I was going to talk about the cake under the history section. Oh, okay. I just I'm not particularly sure. sure why, but that's where I put it. Sure. I knew it'd be in somewhere. It's, it's fine. I just wanted to make sure that we mentioned yep. it. Wonderful. Um, first item on business is approval of the meetings from the, uh, September 25th meeting. Uh, I will make a motion for those minutes. I'll second. Second, Holly. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Hi, Diane. Hi, Holly. Hi, Carolyn. Passed. Okay. Uh, Peter, can I can I just uh, interrupt you for a second here because I was yeah. dealing with Judith, who's trying to get on through the phone line now because she can't do it through a computer, but. We have three board members and friends of Deerfield on here now, so we have a quorum. Well, I, I'd like to make a motion that we um, stand, if you can record this, that we open an official board meeting of the Friends of Deerfield for any pertinent action that we have to take during this call. Um, and that motion is at uh, 6.36 p.m. Um, uh, East Eastern Daylight Time. And so if we just open it up and then take roll call. I think we have Marie, we have Stan, and we have Chris Harris. So we have three out of our four board members, current board members. Great. Uh, Chris, I'm also here, by the way. Uh, 
who's who's Auden also here? Who is that? Oh, also, I'm sorry. It's Judith Inglese. I'm using the call, the telephone. Okay, good. So we have Judith on too, just to note that for your your minutes, Peter. Yep. Okay. Uh, so that was adopted. We're the first item on the agenda is the uh, Eastern European Heritage Festival. Oh, that... Do we not need to vote on that, Chris? That we all three agree. Alex is tied up today. That we will have a meeting at six thirty-six today with the steering committee. Yeah, so we can vote all of us. I if we want. Okay, so it's three. Sorry, Peter. Yep, well, that's fine. So the, um, the first item or the second item on the agenda was a debrief uh, on the Eastern European Heritage Festival. Gene, you want to uh, give us a summary? Um, sure. I'm just finishing my dinner. Yep. So this was lucky you. <laughs> yeah. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. All right. So this was Susan Urban from West Springfield. Um, she was featured in the Greenfield Recorder on the front page after the event. And we are also getting some other press coverage after the weekend in the Polish Eagle, which is a Polish-American newspaper out of the Worcester area. And so I want to say thank you to everyone. It truly takes a village to make a festival like that. There are so many people that contributed in many ways, large and small. Um, but special thanks to Stan and Alex for all their moving tables and chairs and finding a way to fit all the catering boxes to fit in Stan's truck to get them back to Chicopee. Um, we had nearly 600 people Wow! Um, for the weekend. Um, Saturday was a little cold and windy, but pe people still came and they had their dinners. We had a wonderful talk by Father Charles de Mascola, and um, we had so many people who wanted to take the Polish um, crepe paper flower class, and I think Diane attended that, but that was very well received. And the lady, um, Wyslaga, Wyslava Bogostańska, um, came with her own translator. And I think we had two little boys who were making flowers. So it was a, a really wonderful afternoon. Um, Bernhardt's Polish Deli had wonderful food. And we had some special cookies made by them. And there was just not even one crumb of a cookie left. It was just incredible how people love those cookies. Um, then on Sunday, we had the wonderful Polish and Ukrainian dancers and a presentation by Dr. James Pula about the Kosciuszko Squadron. But um, truly the highlight of the afternoon was the Ukrainian dancers from Connecticut. They are so professional, so well-trained, so beautifully costumed, and always a smile on their face. Some of them come from families who are, they're refugees from Ukraine and their fathers or uncles or cousins are fighting in the military there. And they were just such, such wonderful, wonderful performers. And then that the end of the festival was the wonderful food by um, Kathleen Thomas, paid for by the Friends of Deerfield in the cafeteria. And um, the staff at Frontier was, very helpful. They let me do a trial run with our Zoom presentation because Dr. Pula wasn't able to be in person. And I, I'm sorry, I don't know his last name, but his first name is Tyler. He was very helpful. And the other staff, maintenance staff, Butch, just gave us whatever we need. We had all the Ukrainian Polish dancers congregating in the gym so they could warm up and, um, you know, get their costumes arranged. But it was such a wonderful, wonderful weekend and so grateful for everyone who um, participated and helped and gave ideas and suggestions. Um, so thank you. Any questions? 
I, I just like to add that it was a great weekend. I found that many of the people that were there didn't just hit and run. They, they stayed and lingered on Saturday, which is the day where they had Eddie Foreman and all the, uh, the, the boots. It was really, really nice. A lot of local people. I myself had a lot of family members and, uh, the costumes on Sundays with the little kids and the cost that the Ukrainian Cossack dancers were like, wow, this is a, on a frontier stage. This is really cool because as Jean said, they were very professional. They were top notch and it was really cool to see them. It was, it was a nice, really nice weekend, Jean. Thank you for, uh, Thank you for putting this together. Well, Very I, favorable reviews yep. from everybody that that went there. Yeah, Thank it you. was it was just so so uplifting their final number and um like I said some of them were speaking Ukrainian and so they are refugees here in this country and to put on a show like that when you know I mean the horrific things that are happening there but such a positive positive um performance and then we're hoping that other people who didn't get a chance to see it um does anyone know like how does it get put on to fcat i thought jonathan was there yeah right. so but okay, how do you so, how do you watch it on fcat, it, it, FCAT? It, it, yeah okay it, okay it might take uh, gene i can probably comment on this, uh, because I'm always in touch with Jonathan Bullshit about FCAT publication of the 350th. Um, so there's a period where you go through some editing, things like that. He's probably in that mode right now. Um, and, uh, you know, he's tied up full time with FCAT also. And uh, and then he'll start floating it out onto the channels, the two different or three different channels. And he's also compiling at the same time a totally integrated video of all the 350th events. Mm -hmm. And in the end, that'll end up being publicized um, on YouTube, as well as on, on, you know, the FCAT channels, as well as it'll be uh, put in different media into the time capsule. Oh, okay. That's wonderful. So how do you, um, so does FCAT have a website and you can no, go there and a, see? They have a YouTube channel, G. So so you just check periodically to see if it's there? Yeah, well, they'll also put yeah. out an announcement once okay. it's ready. But okay. I can tell you right now that um, it's not going to happen in a week. It's going to take a little while because the station is kind of overrun with events right now that they're trying to process. So we're we're all working on it very hard, but... Uh, it's not going to happen overnight. We've got a backlog and then John's going to take a couple weeks off. He's just, he's had COVID again for a second time. And oh, no. he's, um, he's taken a week off because he just needs to recoup and rest. And and this is a time when there's a lot, tons of stuff um, happening at Frontier, which takes up a lot of time. Like there's a, was a concert uh, a couple days ago. And then there's a, uh, Next Wednesday is they they're doing this big live streaming event for the band concert, uh, the band uh, telethon, and then we just had a special town meeting, and it's just this is just a real busy season. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to get processed. So, so and do you the, think by December maybe? Uh, hopefully, yeah, okay. hopefully. But the uh, and once I get my editing speed up a little bit, I can help out a little bit more. But I've got a backlog of all the of all the lectures so far, but I didn't, I wasn't here for that one. So Jonathan will probably have to edit that one. But uh, just to let you know, uh, you know, everybody expects that it happens overnight and it doesn't happen overnight. And right now, um, and John's still settling into the role of executive director too. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff happening. So just, it will come. Don't worry about it, but it's, don't start bugging them because it. Oh, oh it no, I would not. I would not do that. I just wanted to know, like, yeah. how I no, could see. No, he'll advertise better. when it comes out, and then it okay. will be. They'll have an FCAT channel, probably be under Deerfield 350th or something under or under Deerfield, because <laughs> um, there's a oh, channel yeah. for each different town, so it will show up there, and then you can, you'll be able to link it to your website, put a link to it in your website. 
Yeah, some of my family wanted to watch it that weren't able to attend yeah. that afternoon. So, yeah. no, I understand it, it, about editing. Believe yeah, me. Just be, pa just be patient. Sure. But, it, but I mean, um, just to assure everyone, it will be first class. Um, the whole thing that he's done on the 350th. And if FCAT is short on funds, um, I made sure that they know we'll get the funds. So um... I do want to add also that a good percent of the people wanted that umbrella that belonged to Diane Martin. <laughs> you cannot believe how many people came to us and wanted to take it, buy it, raffle it off. Diane's uh, umbrella was the ambiance. I put it there for ambiance. <laughs> Um, so then I, I need to ask Peter about yeah, the, no, the I'm budget. just going to bring that up. I just wanted okay. to, uh, um, in, in terms of, Jean, you, you, you showed me a brief write-up that you'd written. Can, uh, can you just send that to me so that um, uh, I can just add that into the meetings without having to try and work my way through all my little scribbles here? Sure. Yeah, thanks. Um, in terms of the festival, Gene and I had a, a, a meeting uh, yesterday, at least I think it was yesterday, I'm losing track of time here, um, to go over the budget for the, for the project. We had uh, initially appropriated some funding uh, for the project, and um, all costs are pretty much in right now. Uh, we made the budget uh, or the initial appropriation based on some assumptions and those didn't work out. So the long and the short of it is I would like the steering committee to let us complete the uh, funding needs and appropriate. We had appropriated $7,000 uh, up to $7,000. We are, are $2,600 short. Uh, given a few pennies, and um, if what I would like to do is have the um, steering committee appropriate an additional twenty six hundred dollars to cover the cost of the festival, I, I will make that motion. Um, I think there was a huge amount of effort and and so so much success for um, that weekend that twenty six hundred dollars is is more, is not, it's good, it's fine. Um, is there some way as a committee, we could see the breakdown and see maybe where we went over, given the fact that there was a budget? Cause that's almost well, initially, a- Yeah, initially Holly, the, the budget came out of the um, uh, basic, uh, events that would take place, you know, the dancers and that sort of things. So right. that's what we're, some of, a couple of the dancers came in more than we had initiated because they hadn't actually gotten back to Gene about how much money they were actually going to charge. I mean, it's, I can, I can do that um, certainly, but it's. And the food. I'm sure it, the food, the, 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 food the, 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 the tents, the tables, the chairs, the everything else, uh, yeah. it just was was outside the initial scope. Um, so, okay. yeah, I, I can, thought the I thought the tent was donated. We had to put it up. That's all. I'm just saying that. But I'm, I'm, I'm just. I'm sure Jean just threw a number at us and. Uh, one by one, you start finding, wait a minute, you need this, you need that. I Yeah, I find it's rather a significant number. It's uh, like one quarter of what we originally um, gave out. But at this point, I can't see any aspect that would have been, um, uh, any aspect of it we didn't want. And I guess, unfortunately, it's gone over. I, well, I don't uh, really know what to say, but let's just I mean, pay the bill. Just so we all, just so we all know too. I mean, Friends of Deerfield has kicked in. PVMA has kicked in. This whole event was somewhere around seventeen thousand dollars. 
and it was well received. It was yeah. went both days. It was it was well received. I mean, uh, there were more people in the auditorium Sunday than some of our town meetings. <laughs> there were a lot of people. <laughs> I, I did want to say that I did work on behalf of PVMA to um, try to solicit gifts or sponsorships for the event. And um, I got $990, but there were two large entities that I was really hoping for more funds to cover the overages. Um, one of it was the Polish um, National Credit Union in Chicopee, which is generally very supportive of events like this. And whatever reason, the person that the um, re request went to was on maternity leave, and it just ended up in her email box, and no one bothered to look at it. And, you know, I even had a friend in Chicopee who went down there to try to talk with someone at the bank to help us. And, you know, they just said, well, we can't do it without her. And so those are the kinds of things that I ran into um, trying to, like I said, trying to get other sponsorships. And I couldn't go to a lot of people and businesses in Deerfield because many of them had already made donations for the parade or the <clears throat> um, barbecue or other events. So I, I kind of had to back off on that. But it's sort of a lesson learned that um, it, it took probably two months for the the dancers to get back to me with a price. And, and it was almost twice as what I had budgeted because they were, you know, they wouldn't respond and say how much, how much, how much. And um, like I said, I did try to get other sponsorships and gifts, but I kind of had to back off on that. And I'm very cognizant of costs. I'm the business manager at PVMA. We don't spend money just to spend it. And um, some of the costs were having extra PVMA staff outside of their regular duties at the event on Saturday instead of paying like police officers to direct traffic in the parking lot we had two staff members so you know they're only being paid minimum wage so um i'm, and, I'm not questioning uh, gene at no, all i'm what just explaining did. to you kind of how it all turned out because yeah. people were afraid that like suddenly a thousand people were going to show up and i didn't think that would happen but i needed to be prepared and mm -hmm. like i said i didn't want to pay a police officer to direct traffic on our street um, we had one on the highway, but um, we had staff on on the property. So, so we I, have a motion on the on the floor right now to approve that. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, Holly. Um, I, I just want I you, just want to say that I would really love this tabled. Um, I'm happy to meet, you know, in a couple days, a week. Um, I just would like to have the information in front of me. I feel kind of caught off guard to walk into in. this meeting and have a request for 37%. Holly, we're, talking, we're talking about completed costs. This isn't, okay, Peter, we're may not I planning finish, on anything. Please? May I finish, please? I thought you had. Sorry. I hadn't. Um, we, we, Okay to budget up to seven thousand, and it's coming in thirty seven percent over what we budgeted. All I'm saying is I would prefer as a person trying to monitor town funds and what we spend to have the opportunity to look at what the expenses were um, just so I can in good conscience know how I'm voting. Peter, do you have those numbers available? Well, they're not they're all available. printed out because we we paid uh, Jean's paid out uh, a number uh, of costs. I've submitted those already. We were at uh, can't find my piece of paper here. We've already paid out 
One, two. Plus, we paid out. Um, just we paid, so, we uh, already Peter, paid Peter. over seven thousand dollars. The town has already Wait, paid. It. You say that again. I'm sorry, you got interrupted. We're We were at six thousand dollars. Those budget, those items have already been submitted and paid, and now we're looking at the additional things, anywhere from signs, tablecloths, decorations, dumpsters, websites. Uh, you know, it just it goes on and on. I don't know that knowing the numbers is any gains us. What do you do when you don't like the numbers, or what do you do when you like the numbers? I don't. I don't see it at this point we're not asking for additional funds for as an estimate peter uh, i'd like to make a motion on uh, the friends of deerfield board that uh, the friends of deerfield will contribute five hundred dollars towards these overages uh because they seem to be a myriad of different things and legitimate so we'll contribute five hundred dollars and the 350th steering committee can make up the difference. But I need a vote from our board. Uh, Chris, why don't you to take that vote and then I can um, re redo my um, motion. Yep. Do we so, do we have $500, Chris? Yes, we do. <laughs> so as treasurer, that's why I made the motion. <laughs> I'll second it. All in favor? Uh, you have to have a roll call vote. Okay. Chris Harris, yes. Marie, yes. Stan? Stan Adams, no. No? Okay. Well, two to one. It passes then, right? Yeah. Um, I will re uh, withdraw my motion, original motion, and uh, make another motion for $2,100 to cover the expenses incurred for... Um, the Polish Heritage Weekend. Um, and again, mm -hmm. I understand, Holly, you're concerned, but it was uh, nothing that could have been, you know, I mean, Jean did a wonderful job and uh, having to run this and it was uh, amazing. I've heard nothing but positive things. People were so thrilled. So I I think it was a good, good way to um, spend our money. I will I second want to add one thing that I do want Holly to know that anything that Friends of Deerfield did it was not included in that money. We paid for everything of our own. No, as I said, the, the total project is well in excess of what we're what our portion is. I, Holly, if it make if, if it would help you, I mean, when we get this thing done, I can send you the break down of the whole thing. Well, we will, I just feel we will have people, all of the items. These, okay. these I I just feel walking into this tonight almost like blindsided because it would if it was two weeks ago and we could have had something sent to us ahead of time. So I I'm not going to Perhaps. do you know delay what the rest of the group wants to do, but I'm not prepared to vote on this tonight. Okay. That's okay. I understand, Holly. But the, uh, Jean has these bills, and I feel like we need to pay them. Yeah. I I actually am going to second that, and I'm going to add that anything like the table decorations, the gourds, they actually had people getting for don getting donations, getting the cheapest, uh, not cheapest, but the ni nicest with the smallest amount of money. Uh, so I'm sure that the large numbers that are in the bills are um, from the food, from the two dancers, from Mr. Pula, the Eddie Foreman. I'm sure the things that were already designated that were presented to us over and over as these are the these are the groups or these are the presenters of this weekend. I think they're the ones that were the biggest bill change and perhaps the biggest bill increases, 
not the incidentals of the tablecloths and the the trash barrels or the policeman. I'm I'm most inclined to think it was what we had already um were aware of by Gene of what the schedule was that caused the price increases. I mean, there's things like Northampton Rental Center that's fifteen hundred and forty dollars. Yeah, the know, big so, ones. It got bigger. And so, you know, it's all one right. Of, one of the other kind of complicating matters is that um, in order for people to pre-purchase their food, um, we had to set up what's called a shopping cart on our website page about the festival for people to, you know, buy the food. And that is a special thing that we needed to pay our website um, programmer to do for us, and that was five hundred dollars. Um, and I just mm. want to let people know that PVMA mm -hmm. also paid, you know, close to three thousand dollars of its own funds for this weekend as well, you know, as a cash match. In addition to, there was a lot of in kind time, including myself, probably fifty or sixty hours of time on my own that I donated um, to this project, and it was it was quite challenging um to get these things done and people just didn't respond and so you know i i actually drove with my husband to new britain and on my own time to get the polish dancers because originally we wanted the um krakowiak dancers from the boston area and then they finally decided that they couldn't come so that was a change in the cost um, I had only budgeted like six hundred dollars, and the Polish dancers from Webster were a thousand dollars, and the Ukrainian dancers were twelve hundred dollars. So, I mean, I felt like it was so important to have both of those groups to represent both heritages that, you know, I agreed to that. And the very first time that I ever came to one of these meetings, I think. Um, originally, Carolyn had said, you know, it could be up to $10,000, although the vote was only for $7,000 in the budget. But I truly tried to, you know, get as many things donated. We got a $25 gift card from BJ's and we bought bottled water. We got a $25 gift card from Big Y and we bought um, the Jewish rugula cookies. So Jean, we, Jean, we did Jean, try. We did try you. to get other things. Believe Jean, me. Yep. Jean, I'm not questioning you at all. And I don't want you to feel defensive. I just feel that having this information ahead of this meeting would have been helpful. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I'm happy to sit down with you and Peter if you want to come over to my office one afternoon. I, I'm no. happy to show you all the bills, all the expenses. No, I don't need to. Thank you. Can we proceed with the vote? I yep. second it or the motion. Okay. Um, all those in favor of the motion uh, for twenty one hundred dollars. Carol and I. Diane, I. I'll vote I. Holly, you want to abstain? Um. Yes, I want to abstain because I don't have enough information in front of me. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, next item on the agenda is the time capsule. Um, we started this uh, discussion at last meeting. We had an initial uh, request for input from uh, friends at Deerfield about the inscription. Um, and uh, Stan had sent out a, uh, a mock-up of what the inscription might look like. Uh, that shifted into a discussion of both the inscription and somehow a request for a cost share in the stone, uh, at which point we needed some time to think about that. And so the motion was tabled. I think what I would do is ask uh, Chris or Stan to uh, reintroduce the uh, stone uh, to what's the purpose of the stone and uh, present the two proposed alternatives.
Chris, why don't you take it? Well, I think the most recent information, Stan, is that you circulated what the highly recommended version is of the stone, one single version of it that is complementary to what's already in front of Tilton. Um, and so in the total cost of that is what, Stan? Um, for, oh, total cost of that was 4,000, um, $4,075, that's complete in the ground and the lettering and the stone. Yeah, so it has to do with the foundation of the stone, the stone itself, the engraving of the stone. Um, given the fact that there will be work going on in front of that library or around that library, or the site, I'll just call it a site, um, you know, to be perfectly honest, um, it's up to the 350th steering committee, but I think you have until June 30th of 2024 to make decisions on spending on the 350th. Um, I just guess I would recommend that we just table this for now and know that there might be a $4,000 bill out there and just get all the other activities and projects done that we want to do within the calendar year 350th. 2023 calendar year and um and that um you know we just revisit this in the spring realizing that there's a three to four month lead time to order the stone but we can we can order the stone at any time in the future i mean it doesn't have to be done now and which, um, which possibly could be an increase um chris can i ask me yeah. Uh, something the cost to inscribe is it by letter or line or job job it's by job so it isn't we don't have to limit ourselves for that what was it uh 425 or whatever uh whatever we want to write is it well that 425 was for what you saw when i sent you the diagram all righty um, so yeah, more lettering, more lettering, and more lines is more cost. More cost. But it's programmed. It's programmed in a sandblasting, a laser sandblasting mode for okay. granite. Because I did see what you wrote, and um, and I don't want to have anybody taking any offense with anything, but where you have the friends of Deerfield Incorporated, could you add the word donors after it? I think we wrote sponsors. Um, I think well, sponsors, uh, maybe I didn't see that. Okay, the last maybe one that we sent words. out was sponsored by um, Town of Deerfield, Friends of Deerfield, Inc. Okay. We did include that because I believe the commit your committee said you wanted the town included. Yes. Okay. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. We're at. So, okay. so you're going to table me, this for now? Is well, that what you're thinking? Or do we have to reserve a stone? Well, the, the, I, I guess the, we, we have one absent member who submitted sort of an absentee vote, and that's for the alternative. Um, All right. Kelly did. Type did. of stone. But I, I'm Stan. Perhaps we need to take a step back and just say, what's the purpose of the stone? That's a that's a question that's been going through my own mind. Okay. The question to me is, we did not know if the 300 had a time capsule. This right. will be a permanent marker so that everybody would know that the 350th has a permanent marker. Okay. Now, do we, I, I don't want to, it's kind of late in the discussion. I don't want to seem like a devil's advocate, but do we need such a stone or can we simply mark it with something we can see uh, and we have a record of it and it's there. I mean, the, there's so much, you, you guys have done such a wonderful job getting the time capsule together and the, and the container 
it, it I'm just wondering if, if cost effectiveness, if we dig it up in 50 years, the stones lost its utility. Are we, do we want to pay? So, you know, so, okay, so here's my advice on that because I've done this in cemeteries, right? I mean, so in cemeteries, you mark off burial plots, sometimes with corner stones. They're, they're yeah. rectangular, they're square, but they go down two or three right. feet. Right. And so, I mean, I, we could definitely do something with that with a, a D inscribed into it or something. Yeah. So that's for Deerfield, and then you you corner off the area where it's buried. I mean, if we said it, or you can do it at one corner, southeast corner, and northeast corner, huh. and do it cheaper that way. They just say it's square or rectangle. Didn't we originally talk about a stone because it was going to complement the other one? Because we were thinking of uh, Tilton. I mean, if we can cha if we change ideas. We could do a bench. We could do something smaller with the idea of digging it up. But uh, Absolutely. I think we originally we were talking about area. complementing what was that Tilton. Well, so maybe, maybe right. this, I, I guess maybe the thing, since it's, um, if it's not, so to say, built, uh, gone into concrete here, maybe the thing to do is table it. And then at the end, towards the, as we move forward, really look at budgets and say, is this the most of or is this what we really want to do now? Or do we want to not be quite so formal and just put in a, a you know, a marker uh, that's, that's there. Uh, I think one of the things that I'm hoping that we do uh, is, and I guess part of it's on me is make sure that there's a record of what's done. I mean, we've got all the minutes and everything else and my records, I'm going to put them up in PVMA, I think as a chair. Um, and there'll be information about where that time capsule is. So there won't be any doubts about where to generally look. Uh, we were all over hell and gone trying to find it in between the library and the school and Deerfield, and old Deerfield and whatever. Um, well, you know, but a simple marker saying this is at the head of the time capsule as a stone marker in close proximity to the stone that's already there would seem to me to might work fine. Yeah, and, and you're going to get people to just do a, they're going to go with their tablet, take a picture of it, and have the GPS coordinates. And then that'll be recorded up at PVMA or wherever. Yeah, yeah that, that's fine. But in 50 years, do you really think people are going to know to go to PVMA if it still exists? No oh, offense. I did. Thing. And I did. They don't merge with another museum and they'll be able to find this information? Yep. About that. Actually, well, that's what I did, Stan. I went to PVMA <laughs> and looked up the 300th and went through all the da da data and that helped us set up the 350th and what we were planning to do. And I went through George Melnick's entire log of uh, all the meeting notes, and uh, there's not a reference in those meeting notes to a time capsule. That so, was a lot of person hours you spent. Peter. And that's why I feel that if there was like a marker, one would not have to go through all those person mark, you know, person hours. It's I'm not I'm not arguing against a marker. What I'm doing is suggesting that there may be an alternative type of marker to use. The only thing I really feel very strong against, unfortunately, I have one in one of the local cemeteries, a flat marker, and the grass constantly grows over it. When I am long gone. Unfortunately, I think that marker is going to be long gone and hidden by grass growing over it. So we put in a marker that's high enough so it doesn't disappear. Holly. Um, yes, I have two two comments. Um, first of all, Peter, I totally agree with you that in 50 years, if we do dig up the time capsule, then the marker becomes just a symbol of where we buried a time capsule, but it really wouldn't have significance following that versus if it was just simply labeled 
town anniversary time capsule where it would be used over and over. It kind of, you know, it's kind of come and gone with the significance. Um, yes, we would know where it was. Yes, it's a marker. But Diane, you made a mention of a bench. And I kind of like that idea because I think a bench could be done much more reasonable. I know in our neighborhood, we had a very dear neighbor who passed some years ago and he did significant, um, him and his wife bought all the land behind our houses and put it in land trust. And we put a bench out in the woods by the pond um, and it was not unreasonable. I'm gonna venture to guess it was less than $1,500 but a bench somewhere significant in town, whether it be the library, even if it's the time capsule is dug up subsequently, a bench could remain and a bench could be there for eternity. And it would be kind of a nice little spot for people to sit for a moment. So I, I kind of like that idea to think about that. It seems to me we're, we're yes, Marie. I'm, well, there's also, you know, there's a huge stone there right now from the 300th anniversary. And it seems to me we could put a plaque on the back of it or someplace on it, especially if it was going to be buried in that area with, with the coordinates on it, say a time capsule is buried at these coordinates or something. And you could put it right there and just have a metal, attach a metal, plate to it, a bronze plate or something to it. I mean, there's like Peter said, there's different options to do things. Mm. And, uh, um, you know, like Stan says, even a, a stone that's a little bit like a pillow stone that we were talking about can get buried. Um, and I know my, my brother's uh, foot stone, we have to constantly keep digging it up and resetting it because it keeps getting overgrown. So it needs to be something that's above the ground enough so that it uh, doesn't get sucked down into the ground. But yeah. I, I would I would favor tabling this discussion to the end of the year and seeing where we all stand financially and see what we can afford. Mm -hmm. well, so I would make that motion to the Friends of Deerfield that we table the discussion until we've assessed our, our finances at the end of the year. I'll second that. Yeah. And maybe we could bring it up in next month's agenda just to keep uh, evolving on where we plan or where, mm. where the discussion is going. Yeah. If we could put it on next month, please, Peter. Okay. So just yeah. to close out friends of your motion, all in favor, yes. Marie, yes. Actually, I should have done that as vice president, but sorry, but okay. Stan, and, yes. Uh, okay. That passed, Stan. Record it. Okay, so we will table the discussion until uh well we'll we'll put it on the agenda for next month to see if we've made any um if we have any other ideas. In the meantime, we can think about that. Um we're tabling the stone, but where are we going? Um the time capsule. Are we starting to get some things together, Ollie? Have you been in touch with Rocky and uh, is he starting? Um, I shared um, the information that he gave last okay, time. Okay, I read that. Um, I did ask him if he was interested. Um, I didn't do it timely enough to hear back. Um, so as soon as I hear from him, I'll let you know if he wants to quote unquote be the coordinator. Already. Hey, right. friends, of, friends of Deerfield, I have a question to ask you. The box is big. It's really big. Who's got the inside dimensions of the two boxes? How big of a space? We, we, we've been hearing that the, one, the Pelican box is huge. And the box that was a tech school built. Uh, if we could at some point, maybe the next, next month, uh, give us the inside dimensions. Uh, so if we know how much how much space we have or need or you know, I get was under the impression, Diane, that you were going to fill the inside of the time capsule. And friends at Deerfield, Alex and I have been working on with these totes that we purchased, 
and we're we're putting in things of friends at Deerfield activities. Um, okay. Well, if you could just now. let us know the sizes, that's all. I will, and I'm also while I'm, while while we're at it, Carolyn, I would like to pick up Alex and I would like to get the bells so that we can see if they fit in our tote that oh, we purchased. I can bring them to the town hall. I they're just in my living room. Well, so that's uh, thick. Okay, so if you can bring them and let well, Alex right? and me know, and we can pick them up. <laughs> a lot of string. Okay, Stan. What I'm going to do is uh, Wednesday I'll bring them down to the. Um, they'll be in the conference room. Wednesday. Oh, next week Wednesday or tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, this Wednesday, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Oh, yeah. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm a day late. Wednesday. Yeah. And excuse me, Pat. While I think of it, did you get the pictures of the bells I sent to you and Kelly? Pat Crow. Hello. She's unmuting herself. Oh, she's not listening. Pictures of what? Oh, yeah. I sent a whole bunch of pictures to you of the bells to you and Kelly. Kelly got them. Did you get them? The bells, the bells, the bells. Spell the kids' name. From Founders. Okay, because Kelly got them. I sent. You the I think I you. got them. I what I've been doing is I've been saving them. On the shared drive, I've been oh, working on a bunch of other okay. things. All right. I believe I did get them and I saved them on the annual town report because okay. I have Alrighty. other things that I've been working on. Thank you. I'm sorry I interrupted. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I all of a sudden I don't said, know if I opened them and looked at them or not. So I was trying to think. Them aside. Okay. Dan, Just, if you want a if you want a rough dimension on the on the accumulation of the bells, you're looking at less than one cubic foot. Yes. Oh yeah. I figure ten ten by ten by ten inches is a probably about right. Diane has them all organized, and I didn't use them for our float because it was raining. Oh. So I have three. They're in three separate plastic bags that Diane had organized them. And then I have the posters, Stan, that were on the float that the kids made, all the posters. So I'll put so, those in, I'll put those in the conference room, okay? Okay. Well, Alex and I will pick them up on Wednesday and then we'll put them in our chokes according to what the building inspector said to, for us to do with these these items that we put in them. And our things are going in the red box. Okay. Um Okay, next item on the agenda uh, is the uh, history history group. Um, just uh, the um, talk that Kevin Sweeney gave on the twelfth. I think it was very did a very nice job. I had a lot of great comments afterwards, and um, it turned out that he basically said, "Well, that's the last public talk he's going to give." in his career. So uh, it's too bad. He's a really good historian and um, um, I, I've, I'll i continue to work with him offline, but uh, I'm sorry, I was sorry to hear that. But uh, so that was a nice benefit for us though, that he's willing to give his last uh, <laughs> public lecture uh, for the series. And uh, the food afterwards was excellent. Uh, as usual, and um, it, everybody had a smile on their face when they left, for sure. Um, I do want to add, Kevin Sweeney is a remarkable Amherst College professor, well-liked by many, many people at Amherst College. Yep. As well as elsewhere. Yes. <laughs> well, he's been, a, he's been definitely a friend, a yeah. friend of Deerfield for, for a, a, a lot of right. long time. Too. Um, so coming up, I've been thinking about November twelfth. Uh, uh, I put put it on the calendar way back when, but I've been trying to work through some options. But it seems to me that um, rather than focus on one particular subject as we've done in the series, uh, it it might be, 
I think interesting for the people that attend as well as the, some of the past speakers to really have more of an open forum. And so what I'm gonna propose is that I'm putting together a photo essay on 300 or Deerfield history. And right now the title is, and that's the way it was, a photo essay and reflections about Deerfield's peoples, places and ways of life. And it's designed to be an open panel and audience discussion, not something that's just coming from us. Uh, so that the slides and the, the essay will introduce people to a wide range of things from names of places in Deerfield to the evolution of transportation, to agriculture, to uh, the fire department. I, I'm, it'll be a potpourri of things, but really designed to provide a sense of place and a sense of transformation in terms of this town's history. Um, so Barb Matthews and, and uh, Gary Sanderson have agreed to join me in a panel so we can uh, provide some expertise in terms of history. But once we're through with the, the slide projections, the PowerPoint, um, then I really want to, would like to turn this into a panel audience discussion and answer questions. Anything, it's sort of like wide open. Anything that people wants to want to know about Deerfield's history or some of the things that we were talking about in terms of the essays or some of the past talks. So that's on the 12th and then on of the- November, Of November? Yes. At Frontier? Yeah, that's, that's it, yeah, Frontier at, at uh, two o'clock Sunday afternoon on the 12th. And then um, December 3rd, Kevin McBride is going to talk about King Philip's War and the Battle of the Great Falls. Um, this is a project that's been going on for 10 years now. And they're back in the field. Um, trying to find more evidence of the battle, tracing musket balls and hardware across the landscape. They've already covered three and a half miles so far and have been able to trust, uh, track the retreat. Um, so Peter, so those will be quick the last. Question. Quick yes. question. Uh, was the 12th of November on the original agenda? The, no. The yes. 12th of November was, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, That's... they both, Chris, they both were. Um, they both were, okay. but Peter didn't have a topic for the November 12th one until just recently, but it was on our original yeah. estimate. The thing that was added in was the um, festival. That was what was added in from the original estimate was the Polish festival there. Okay, but okay, I just want to make sure because I know the caterer had, um, you know, set aside yeah. in her book or calendar or schedule. And so yeah. as long as it's on the agenda, the 12th of November and 03 of December, we're fine. We're fine. Uh, Chris, and that, that's fine. I had to talk with Kathy after the last meeting and uh, she asked me about the 12th. Well, what do you, you know, what are you going to, what do you think I ought to serve on the 12th? And, and so aside from Indian pudding, I don't know what she's going to come up with, but that was one of the things that she wanted to uh, put on the menu for November. Okay, perfect, perfect, thank you. Peter, I'm yeah. noticing that it's not on the 350 page though. No, it's not yet. Okay, because the, I'm, the this is, symbol. This, this has been kind of an evolutionary couple of weeks between okay. getting my son married and whatever, I haven't had a chance to put the flyer together, but it, it's, it, it will be. Okay. As soon as, as soon as I can get it up there. Yes. Um, Peter, is this going to be this the talk on the 12th going to be dealing with coming into the 1900s, basically, yep. which is yep. something that would probably, I think, would stir a lot of interest. So as soon as you get some ad out, 
uh, page we can post start posting stuff. Yep. I think, you know, it yep. would draw a lot of interest because when the pictures come up on Facebook, there's a lot of people that people that enjoy um, e either learning something or adding something. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think um, it, it'll bring it into because they're because they're photographs that'll bring it into the late 18th or late 19th and 20th century. So we've got the, for example, the fire department. I've got everything from guys during a muster pulling a cart, a hose cart uh, to the fire department, the, the building or the fire station that was built with CCC money in 1935 to uh, the burning down of uh, several buildings in town, which um, even having a fire department didn't help. Uh, you know, it's it, but there's a plenty there. There's the the trolley cars, the the fair, you know, the ferries. I mean, the, the it'll it'll be broad brush, and I think people will like it. And and the other thing that I'm um, want to do with it is we've had an oral history program that we've been working on, and so a number of the pictures in there will actually be taken from other from families' uh, photo records uh, that illustrate a particular. Uh, topic. So it'll be nice to, uh, and it'll be a, a, a nice way, I think, to talk about memories and, and the importance of memories in terms of history um, as a way to do that. So I I fully agree with you. And um, maybe we can talk offline too when I get the slideshow together and see if uh, I'll give you a run through. We try it out. Yeah. So how does, how does that November 12th, um, you know, venue, you know, the program that you're putting together and still fine tuning. How does that tie in with what PBMA has? Because Gene, I saw, I saw an email blast the other day that about the then and now up at PBMA. And what's the timetable for that being on exhibit up there? Tomorrow actually is the last day of that exhibit and um, our curator Ray Radigan worked with um, students at Frontier to take pictures of today and that was paired with old photographs that we have in our collection. Um, he, he, I don't, I think that you would have gotten an email blast about that. Did you receive that, Chris? Yeah, I, I, mean, yeah. I get that. Yeah, yeah. so um, I don't know if any of those pictures are things that you could um, have Ray send you um, digital images that you would want to use for your talk, Peter. Yeah, I have all of the digital images that Ray's used. Okay. I got it for me, actually, or a bunch of them, because I, I've digitized all of PBMA's digital archives. But anyway... Uh, one of the but one of the things I was thinking about since you brought it up is, as it might be a good venue to actually move those down to Frontier for that particular talk. There's a wonderful set of pictures. Um, they were they've been on display at the town hall for two months, Chris. Oh, they've been beautiful. Yeah, I saw them in June when I was there. Yeah, well, maybe we could. Uh, I mean, if, if 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 they're being taken down to PVMA, maybe we can just uh, bring a number of them down and put them out in the hallway for that particular talk as an an additional way of gaining interest. Yeah, there's some really cool photographs. Um, there's one of George Sheldon parked in a, I think it's a Model T in front of the post office. Yeah. <laughs> it's and then there's one of the it was called the Hotel Lathrop and now um that's that corner building completely different that's um is it Bueno Sano restaurant and Leo's yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's just the <laughs> the change is tremendous but well one of the, one of the things that's part of what I'm putting together is a look at the South Deerfield village the 19th century and its evolution to today uh, it's one major transformation. Um, 
wasn't there a big giant gas explosion too? Yep, nineteen oh five. Yeah, that was blew out half of Elm Street. Yeah, that was a pretty. Yeah, amazing. I've got pictures of that too. So, <laughs> so, so, just to close the loop on this concept. Um, Gene, I don't know what the policies are at PVMA in terms of when you take a display down. Can it be repurposed for another location two weeks down the road? But that decision has to be made, I guess, tomorrow when you're taking stuff down. Um, yeah, you would have to check with the curator about how he set it up at the town hall. I did not see it at the town hall, and I don't know what he used. Um, for panels to display it. Um, his, like I said, his name is Ray Radigan. He's very yeah, nice. I, um, I can, I can talk to Ray Jean. Yep. Yep. Uh, they're, they're little, um, they were set up on the benches and, and, uh, along the back wall of the open shell that was at the town hall. They had little stands. Um, and if we had tables, for example, to just laid out along that back wall, uh, Chris in the hallway. Uh, I think that th those would work out fine. You could just stand them on the back of the table against the wall. And then I'll leave it to Stan to work with the, the caterer so that we do the food probably in the cafeteria again, keep everything away so that all the precious um, uh, visual um, art is, is, you know, not with food or anything like that. All right. Well, well, we'll work on that. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't think we need to do that because I think we can put all those out in the front foyer, and then have the food in the back. I think we can have them separate. Yeah. I don't. You think could do them as as people came in. That maybe yeah. the that long hallway before they even get into the uh, auditorium. Yeah. Um, I mean, okay. People definitely love to look at all that stuff too. It's quite interesting to watch people. Oh yeah. Well, hopefully there'll, there'll be enough of interest in, in terms of the present, the slide presentation. And this will be, so a lot of these pictures are going to be, you know, 10 feet big up on the screen. So, uh, but then they can look at some of the details in the hall as well. So, um, Excellent. Excellent, yeah. People so uh, just a, a quick note about the uh, cake dismantling. Uh, the cake is down. Um, Fred Vector and his crew and I and Tim Hilchey and a few other people worked with the folks from Leverett uh, to get it down Saturday morning. We were there at eight. We were done by 11. It was off and running with the uh, thanks from the Leverett crew and the Leverett crew went back to Leverett and put it back up. So that Sunday morning, the cake is now in Leverett. Is it lit? And um, <laughs> I sort of the joke, I had to pay Waitley a dollar for the cake to, to get it here. So um, Stylus uh, Ball, I think that's his last name, had, had paid me a dollar. So Leverett just bought the cake from us for a dollar. <laughs> Done so deal. It, it's on its way. And, and uh, <laughs> it, it, it's still in, in reasonable shape. And uh, I've had uh, several thanks from the committee over for Leverett's three fifth, uh, two fiftieth. Uh, thanking us for the cake and all the help of getting it there. So that's a uh, very. Do uh, you know where in Leverett it is? The location is. I don't stand. Um, oh, okay. I think is there a library there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's by the library somewhere. Okay. So it's up on top of the hill there. Okay. There is there. Leverett has a web page. Um, what's it called? <laughs> Celebrating two fiftieth Leverett or something, something close to that. If you query Leverett two fiftieth, um, they have their own web page, so it'll tell you where the pick where. Okay. The, where okay. The thank you. Yep. Um, okay. Moving on. Um, update from friends of Deerfield. I guess I'll, I'll take the lead on this one. I mean, you know, we've we've covered a, a number of topics already, but we do we're supporting the 12th November and the 3rd of December speaker events, and we're we're also coordinating with 
the historic churches, we call it that, um, for December 10th. And, um, you know, all that will be pinned down in the coming days in terms of open house times for those churches, what service times they're going to have for that Sunday. They might change it just to coordinate better and make it easier for people to even attend a service. But the open houses are just tours of and historical tours, if you will. And then we'll have um, we'll have food catered at um, the Pope John Paul II Center, which is attached to the Holy Family Roman Catholic Church on Sheriff Street. Um, so the four churches involved is the Brick Church in First Church of Deerfield up in Old Deer, Old Deerfield. Uh, that's 1824, as you know. Um, the Holy Family Roman Catholic Church on Sugarloaf Street, across the street, the Ukrainian Church, and then on Thayer Street, Holy Name of Jesus Church. Um, those three churches in South Deerfield go back to the um, first um, 25 years of the 1900s, the oldest one being up in Old Deerfield. And of course, the Congregational Church is closed, but that was the oldest church, 1821. And St. James is closed, and that was 1848. So um, so we'll focus on those four churches, invite everybody down from Old Deerfield to join for, um, you know, fellowship and socializing and food uh, at the center there on uh, Sugarloaf Street and um, go from there. But and we'll get posters out. We'll get the publicity. All We're just trying to work all those details with all the churches because they all yeah. have different a different availability of greeters and pastors and priests. And uh, also they had different schedules for Sunday, but they may reorient some of those schedules just for that day. Um, we also have Susan Urban coming to do Polish Christmas ornament presentation and a, a table setting. Um, so PVMA is the recipient of a grant from Mass Humanities. Um, so we'll be able to cover her stipend, but in 2024, we, um, plan to continue some of our Eastern European programming because of this grant that we received um, telling the stories of unrepresented people in Massachusetts and PVMA chose to apply for Eastern Europeans so we um, hope to offer more programming to the people of Deerfield and the community at large next year. Sounds great. Chris would uh, I want to say that I've been getting a lot of People with, with Alice and I talking about this, members of the Saint, the former Saint James, they somehow want to get involved and have like Saint James, not as a church, but there, you know, with activities or something that they're going to decide what they want to do. So we possibly may have five, four open churches and one closed church. We can actually do even more than that, Chris, if you if you want. I mean, I can put a poster together on the Congregational Church in South Deerfield. Uh, St. James was originally the Monument Church, uh, which was near the Bloody Brook Monument. So yep. there's that one. Um, and we don't really have good pictures, but there actually was a Methodist church right in downtown South Deerfield. Um, if you know where the old Hosley's garage was, the, mm -hmm. it was right in the, as you take the bed, it was, um, on the same side of the street as the bank, the, um, produce bank. And then there's a dentist's office there. And then there's a cart, a car detailing shop that used to be where Hosley's garage was. And right next to it was where the Methodist church was. Mm -hmm. And that was built in 1840 and uh, lasted until the 1920s. Uh, and it, it, it became a, a rec hall for South Deerfield at that point in time. And then it burned mm -hmm. another fire. So anyway, I can put a little bit together to fill in the gaps uh, visually if, you, if, if that was something that you wanted to do uh, at the reception or something, you know, wherever you yeah, can. I mean, I, I think that's a good idea. I think we should get some poster boards up at the center where we're going to have food and 
and gathering. Um, and of course, I know St. James quite well in terms of the history of that church. And so um, going back to the second congregational church, the Monument Church. So, so we can compare our notes of what we have in our photos and then do that. But the Methodist Church is, I just wrote a note down. It's new. I didn't know anything about that. Yeah, well, none of us in living memory ever saw it. Um, I have a picture of the trolley car going by it. Mm. <laughs> but that'd be cool if we can do a poster board on that. I mean, so, yeah. so I mean, Peter, I don't want to take up other people's time, but we can compare notes and get that all together. And yep. John Cooper, Alex, and I, yes, and Marie, yeah. I yep. think that's a lovely idea to include, even though the closed churches. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything? Anything else from uh, friends? Uh, the uh, I think those no, are just, no. Just um, I, am, I haven't reported to you financially because I really wanted to close on October first. But you know, by uh, by the time we're done on December tenth, there's not going to be a lot of cash left. To be perfectly honest, but that's that's okay. And we haven't gone back to our generous sponsors and donors and asked for anything more and um i think that's good because people needed a break if you know what i mean yep okay great we're still solvent oh yeah we're still okay. solvent mm -hmm. uh next item on the agenda this new item was the website and, and social media uh that was a item that kelly wanted to uh to discuss and i think marie are you still on yeah, um, Kelly um, can't do the website anymore or the the Facebook stuff, and she wants to give it up. So if anybody w wants to take it over, uh, they're welcome to. I told her if nobody else would take it, that I would I would do it just because a lot of the stuff comes out of Peter uh, that has to be posted. So that you know, because I was constantly peppering her with things to post. So I will do it if nobody else wants to do it, but she just can't do it anymore. But she didn't want to give me um, access to the um, credentials to do the uh, Facebook page without going through uh, you all first. So um, she's looking for a motion to, uh, if anybody has a, a desire to take over the website um, or know somebody that they might uh, put it to, mm -hmm. um, I don't need to take it um but i will if nobody else will so that's that's where that is well marie i would be thrilled to death if you would be willing to do that i know it's at the end of the year but um i'm sh there are things that still need to be posted and we will be updating them and i think getting as many pictures on there as possible is really important so um I would make a motion to accept Marie's kind and generous, gracious offer to take over the website and the Facebook page. And I will I'll second that. Okay. And Marie, I don't need, I don't want to volunteer people when they're not on here, but Alex is pretty good too. So you might be able to divide and conquer and share the load a little bit. Well, I was planning on on sitting down with Alex or asking him to sit down with me to go over to make sure I have all the the odds and ends right. But uh, I have access. Uh, I have uh, my own login to the website that uh, Jennifer gave me a long time ago that I hope still works. So I can get it. I should be able to get in there. I just haven't gone in. But there's a lot. Of, you're right. There's a lot of stuff we want to post that hasn't been posted yet. Marie, are you just referencing the Friends of Deerfield pages or ours? No, no, it'd be the the it'd Deerfield. be the Deerfield. No, because Alex runs the Deerfield, uh, the Friends of Deerfield website. This would be the 350th website okay. and the okay. 350th Facebook page. Okay. Um, um, you'll want to work with Kelly on the permissions because she had to update all the passwords. Yeah. No. Yeah, but she didn't want to give me the password until she until you had voted on it. So oh yeah, that, that's why nothing's gone up over the last week or so. Okay. Um, but I want to make sure that we can pepper 
pepper the thing and create an event for to try to figure out how many people are going to come to the um, talk on the 12th uh, and the other one because uh, we had a good crowd at, the, at uh, Kevin Sweeney's. I thought I think. I stopped counting at about 60. So we'd had between 60 and 80 people. Yeah. So uh, I think anything, you know, approaching 100 is a good crowd. So, and all the food was gone. So <laughs> I think the word has gotten out about the food. I think some people come for the food. <laughs> but I think everybody's been pleasantly surprised at what they've learned. But um, I really like what Derica is doing with the Waitley Historical Society. She's been posting a lot of pictures. And I know that earlier this year when I was collecting pictures from people and posting them, people really like that. So I want to get back to doing that and we'll make a place on the 350th website. And there's no reason why that has to stop just because the year is over. Yeah. You know. I would like to vote yes. And thank you for Marie for offering to do stuff that I can't do. I don't know how to do it. So I, I appreciate you coming forward and take me as a yes vote. Ali, I'm a yes vote. All right. I guess you're. I guess you're. Yes, you're yes, you do. I, can't, I can't do any of that at all. Thank you. Thank you very much, though. Well, I'm supposed to be retired, and now this is my third job. So. <laughs> yeah, if you need to cross the the, the street in the, in the morning time going to school, she'll she'll wave the sign out there. She's a crossing guard. Um. All right. Moving on quickly. I'm. I don't know if Judith is still on. Chris is. I am. Still oh I God! Am. I'm. I apologize for taking this long. Um, wow. Carolyn, do you yeah. was was this at your request? Is that? Yes. Um, yeah. I had found out from Chris uh, that Judith wasn't able to um, raise all the money that she normally does for her ceramics, okay. and I. Um, I, I felt, I felt that this was something that, you know, we were going to put it in a frame so it could be movable if necessary. But I, I thought this would be a lovely, lovely reminder of, um, the 350th and, you know, for a few, a little bit of money, it seemed like, again, a good investment that people could look back on and really enjoy for a lot of many years. So, I like the idea. Judith, can you can you give us an idea of the the money that or the the amount of shortfall you've got? Yeah, well, let me let me answer some of your questions that you had put. Um, first of all, the status of the project. I I just began working on it. Um, whether I had the money or not, just because I feel you know, strongly about the project. So I am, I did all the clay work. I'm actually glazing it. I'm hoping to install it probably by the end of November. Um, I definitely wanted to get it up in 2023. So it's, it's just moving right along. What happened um, in terms of, I was very naive about getting money from banks because it, for the other two projects for Leverett, it, it just worked out so well, um, and everything sort of fell into place. This time it didn't quite fall into place. Um, in terms of the banks that I uh, approached, um, I started with the MTB Bank in Deerfield, and the officer I spoke to was totally enthusiastic, um, lives in Deerfield, so forth, but actually, you know, after a month of trying to get back to him, um, it, it just really petered out. I don't know if his supervisor. Um, what bank was that? You know, just, MTB. MTB. The one on the corner. By the one Lines. on the corner. Yes. Yes. It's not a little um, So the. The bank, um, I did get a $500 um, contribution from the Greenfield Cooperative Bank. Um, I did get a personal contribution from 
um, a Todd Walker, who is from Morgan Stanley, and he was saying that he he could get two hundred dollars to up it to a thousand. I did apply to the Deerfield Cultural Council for a um, five hundred dollar grant. I won't know until I think it comes out in January. I had hoped to um, apply to this Mass Cultural Council grant for creatives, um, only to discover in October that I can't do that because I had gotten a grant, uh, an artist fellowship in 2021, and anyone who got any money from 2021 to 2023 can't apply for this. So that fell through. Um, I applied because I, I think Chris wanted to know what bank said no. Um, People's Bank uh, had given me money before, but they said Deerfield's not part of their area, so they didn't want to. Do, they would, couldn't do it. Um, UMass Five College, which also gave me money before, said that this year they're doing, they're really working on um, needy causes, and could not do it at least this year suggested you know applying again greenfield savings bank which was incredibly generous for the leverett project um and i don't think they spent in anything but they had said they'd give a hundred dollars before they gave a thousand dollars so what's happened is my expectations have been um not met <laughs> The other bank that said no was Franklin First Federal Credit. I think also because they were saying, you know, that their priorities this year are different. It seems that there are different needs this year than there had been. So yes, I'm. I'm. I don't have the money that I had hoped to. I really want to just cover my expenses, and I am willing to give my, you know, my labor and my design um, as part of it. Um, but I would like to cover the expenses of keeping up a, a workshop and keep it, and then all the materials. So, yes, uh, the thing is I could wait and maybe 2024 is a better point to try to, um, you know, solicit money. But... I didn't know, given what I've been listening to, it's really hard to ask for, for say, $1,000, uh, uh, given all the things that you are dealing with. So that's where I am at at this point. Um, however, I'm going through with the project, and it will be up there. And, um, yeah. So, Judith, what's the net requirement that you're asking for? I'm well. It would be yeah, a thousand dollars, if if that could be raised. Yes, um, and it doesn't. It could be raised if not in 2023. You know, I could wait till 2024, since I'm working on it anyway. Um, and I've and I have money to at least cover, you know, basic materials at this point, given the money that was given. So. You know, there is that possibility because I heard you say, you know, we've we've sort of used up our money already for 2023. So uh, possibility, again, as I said, for maybe something that could be um, donated in 2024 if that if that is uh, feasible. Judith, you came, you gave me an, an earlier budget of. Four thousand to to do the project. Yes, it, I and, did. And, and that I think is very reasonable. That that's what was presented to the steering committee. Um, yep. You're a shortfall now. What's the, what's the difference? So my shortfall right now is if I get if I get the grant from um, Mass Cultural Council, it's two thousand. But what I'm trying to sort of suggest is that. If if there's no possibility for 2,000, I would just give my time, and I mean my labor and my design uh, as a donation, and then you know cut that 
a mountain half because I really I feel like it's a it's a a worthwhile project. I see what's happened in Leverett with the project, um, and how important these little artworks are to the community. I mean, even the Leverett Library, they took the images from the mural and they've put it on their new library cards. And I didn't even know they were going to do that. But it's just that the work actually, you know, builds the community. I don't know if she moved away from the phone. Is there, is there any way we could do a little a little uh, crowd fundraising or something? Like on, make a little... You know, we probably could raise a few hundred dollars that way to make a little, a little fundraiser on Facebook. We can't do fundraising for this committee. It's a conflict of interest. No, but uh, friends of Deerfield could. We could. We yeah, but, uh, but 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 I don't think um, my opinion on this is I don't. Given what Judith is saying, she's backing off of the original budget. Actually, just trying to cover materials keeping the lights on at her shop, workshop, and donating. She's asking for $1,000 between the 350th Steering Committee and the Friends of Deerfield. And oh, she's raised, yes. I think, Judith, you've raised 1400 so far? Uh, yeah. And, and then, well, 1300 so far, and then uh, hopefully 500 if if the Deerfield Cultural Council comes through. But to keep the project going and to try to get it installed before the end of the year, you need a thousand dollars. That's what you're telling us. I'm I I will install it no matter if I get a thousand dollars or not. I'm just I'm going to do that. But I would like that money to to pay me back for for my yeah. You know, for well, the firing cost. The biggest thing is actually firing, um, you know, kiln costs like and Christine. the studio. Yeah. <clears throat> so the the mural is going to go up no matter what. It's just whether I can be reimbursed or not is what I'm, yeah. you know, considering. But, uh, okay, so, so here's my proposal to the 350th Steering Committee and to the Friends of Deerfield. Let's just split this down the middle in 500 a piece and keep this project going on time and get it installed. Um, and if and if and if Judith ends up getting a windfall of some other funding, I'm sure based on good faith, she'll reimburse the town of Deerfield, whatever. Uh, yes, absolutely. I'm I'm I think that's a wonderful proposal. I again it's small money and to have something really substantial to look at years from now is is hugely important. And they can be moved and always always available to the public to see. Right. I mean that's one of the things we wanted to do is put it in a frame and attach it to the wall, you know, the brick wall, but also um be able to move it if we have to. I would also suggest that maybe, you know, that we could even go with the, we have the money in the budget that could cover it. The, if we paid 25% of the original proposal, which is a thousand dollars and Chris could find 500. I, I think we owe it to Judith as an artist to, to find that money. Um, I would just like to add um, that I think it would be cleaner for Judith and Judith, thank you for all of your efforts so far in your attempt to fundraise on your own. Um, I would like to see our steering committee um, authorize the $1,000 that she is asking for out of our budget. I think it's not unreasonable. As Peter said, it's 25% of the original budget I think we are in a manageable place, and I would like to make a motion that the uh, 350 Steering Committee approve $1,000 uh, to cover expenses to Judith. 
So I will um, withdraw my motion and, and second Holly's. All right. All those in favor? Aye, Diane. Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Holly. Aye, Peter. So carried. So what well, motion thank do you. you what motion residual motion do you want from the friends of Deerfield then? Judith or or Peter, you can tell well, me what I mean, the guidance should be. You were you were suggesting that you maybe could uh, fund five at a five hundred dollar level. You can leave it at that. You can go up. I mean, it's, <coughs> you're sitting on the other end of another budget. So yeah. So so I would make the motion, and I think Stan had to step away. But if Marie's available still, that the friends of Deerfield put five hundred dollars towards this project, so that it 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 should be funded at that point. We shouldn't have a problem at that point. I I really thank you all. I think it's it's just wonderful that you've come together to do this. Thank you. Okay, but but uh, Marie, are you still on? I am here. I'm here, but um, I'm I, I and I concur. I think this is a great project that I want to support. I'm just wondering. We're supposed to have a a full board meeting in another oh, week or so, right? So, can we put it off so, till then? So I was actually I was. I mean, we can ratify it then, but I was actually thinking that we could go as high as seven hundred fifty on this. But we gave five hundred dollars towards overruns on the Heritage Festival. So, uh -huh. from a treasure standpoint, I'm perfectly comfortable with authorizing five hundred now. Okay. Should we wait for Stan to come back, or just the two of us can do it? I don't know. I, I think he's probably going to abstain, to be honest, because you know, just my gut feeling. So. Let's vote on it now. Okay. If we can't pass it now, if we can't pass it now, we'll all, do it. All in, in favor, uh, early say November. aye. All in aye. favor, say aye. Aye, aye. aye. We'll tell. We'll tell yeah. Stan afterwards to. Um, I mean, one of the things you can do, Chris, later on, perhaps at your other board meeting, is if if you do find extra funds, there's no there's no reason you can't decide to change the amount at that point in time. But but I'm least, comfortable with five hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Now. Okay. So at least Judith knows where she's sitting in terms of yeah. this money will come her way. Judith? Yes. Judith Slow, this is Diane Martin. Would you be so kind as to take a lot of pictures of the work in progress? Sometimes the effort you put in uh, is equal to the finished project, so we wouldn't Absolutely. mind having um, a lot of pictures. You know, this so is a oh, great I idea. Take some pictures. Yeah, I can actually take some pictures. Selfies, whatever uh, I, it is, but uh, the work in progress would be nice. Okay. As I said, I, I'm glazing it now. So, you know, it's basically pieces on a table, but you can start to see, you know, the yeah. imagery a little bit. But that's excellent for people that aren't our artists. It's like an education for us. Yeah. In fact, Judith, yeah, if, well, if, if you want, if, if you can get some pictures of the process, um, I can make up a poster for you in the end with the final mural and the steps along the way. And oh, okay. uh, you can have it for, for the future as well. Oh, that's, that sounds really nice. I, I do want to say one thing to all of you that I really appreciate having sat through your meeting. I, I honor you all <laughs> to, to be doing what you're doing. It's quite wonderful. You're very oh. dedicated. <laughs> so, <laughs> I uh, applaud you. Judith, Thank you. when you have a chance, um, if you could uh, email a picture to the select board, um, then we can write a letter of support for the Cultural Council grant for you. Uh, you know, I, I took your letter. I've already, um, you know, I had to submit it October, I think it's the 19th. Um, I took the letter you wrote, um, a board uh, letter from the board, and I, I, I submitted it with that. Um, oh, okay. So you did. All right. I didn't know if you had gotten a letter. Yeah, I did. So I, that's, yeah, I appreciate that. Okay, great. Um, I think, great. depending upon when it will be installed, I think we should look to do some kind of event. So, you know, kind of an unveiling, it would be kind of cool. So right. it's not just, put up it's you know 
presented. We have some kind of honor um, bestowed on Judith and kind of have some fun with it. Um, do you have any idea when that would be, Judith? I I don't know. I mean, I know what Leverett did. I mean, they um, I installed it, and then they did something a little after in okay. both cases. Okay. So we could do something like that because I don't know exactly when it will be finished, but I'm really shooting for the end of November. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Judith, is it something that could be uh, initially mounted on just like a, a tripod stand or something so people could see it and then we we have to figure out where on the building it's going to get mounted and stuff like that. But the unveiling, I guess, is what Holly's talking about. Uh -huh. the, the shroud comes off the mystery piece. <laughs> um, it's very heavy. I we we found a site, um, a, a wall as the entrance to the, you know, oh, okay. the, the town. Okay. So I I mean I think I think it should be. It it I don't think it could be put on a tripod. It's it's heavy. Okay, okay. just a thought. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good thought. <laughs> Judith, when you're getting um, ready to, for, um, you know, finishing it, can you please let me know so I can let Kevin, our highway superintendent, know, uh, because he was he was trying to figure out the loading on the um, bricks, uh, just, a, you know, face. Okay. So we're going to have to do some, like, kind of big drilling or something. Um, well, so I I'm, thought, you know, as part of, I, I do have in my um, budget, um, uh, uh, installation, some installation costs, and I could, I was going to get someone um, to help do the drilling, and um, okay. so well, I think we'll we could do it, but I will definitely yeah. let you know. Yes, that's great, because then they can coordinate with Kevin, because he was, okay. we were a little concerned about the weight load. Yeah, I, I don't, I think the, the brick can hold it. It's not it's not that heavy. I mean, it's heavy, but not not right. uh, not possible for the brick wall to hold it up. Yeah, we were going to try to get it in a beam or something. You know. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, definitely, he should be. He should be be part of it. Yeah. So I, I, what I could do is get to you when I determine the time and and the day that we can install it, and then hopefully he can be available then too. Perfect. Yes. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. All right. The last item on the agenda is just set the next meeting date, uh, which would normally fall on November 27th. That's the last Monday of November. Is that uh, clear for people or should we look um, the week before Thanksgiving, do it on the 20th? But Yeah, that's fine. 27th is good for me. Okay. Yep, that's fine. Six, All right, 27th it is. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I second it. So, yeah, and so uh, quick, 8.15. We need to okay, adjourn our and, meeting. Uh, a motion to adjourn for uh, second. Okay. All we in pass. favor? Two of us passed. Okay. 8.15. Thanks, folks. We're adjourned. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you, Pat. Thank you.